I could not wait to do this review. So much to talk about. Let's start at the very beginning and let's uh, work our way to this, to what I think is a happy ending. So Tommy brings all the guys into Tommy's tavern. He lets them know that the ball is back in their court and it is their turn to eliminate one of the women. They all talk about what happened last week with Chris. They did not like it. They saw what was up. They saw how much Chris liked her, how much he talked about her. And they saw how she was giving him energy too. And then for her to play him like that and just dismiss him, I mean, it just, it left a bad taste in all their mouths. Specifically in Edwin's, because Edwin is the only dude that she has something of a connection with because she was all up under Chris in the beginning. And then he made the statement about Pete, uh, he made the statement about splitting the bills and then she just went cold on him. She started cozying up to Edwin. He gave her a little bit of rhythm, but Edwin's got two other options. And you know, Naya is kind of like third string. And then she went and she did what she did. And you know, he's a, he, he knows what's up. He knows that, you know, the questions that she was asking him about how he handles finances, she wanted him to answer a certain way. He has her card, he knows who she is. And so that's why he's not invested in her. And he was not defending her when the rest of the men were talking because yo, it is what it is. And this chick Naya got so much nerve. There's a scene with her sitting outside talking to I don't know who it was, one of the guys, and saying something about how Chris had deleted his, his uh, social media account and she doesn't know how to get in touch with him because she wanted him to help her with a podcast. Yo, people like this got so much nerve. Like, you are so disrespectful. You were so mean to that man. You were disrespectful to him publicly. You played him out and you still, now you want, you want him to help you with something? You, she's a user, like, and I did not see this at all. The first episode, I thought she was really cool down to earth, but all of her true colors showed. You want this man who you played out because he said the wrong thing to now help you with a podcast. You were so disrespectful to him towards the end, and now you're wondering how you can get in touch with him. Like, who? who? I just, I can't, I can't. Like, and that's what makes me think that there's something wrong with her, like that she doesn't even realize what she's how she's coming off or or what she's doing because any person with some common sense would say you know what i did do dirty let me lay low it would have been nice if i could have had but you know what i can't ask this man for nothing at this point but she still feels brazen enough to try to contact him so he could do her a favor like where did they do that at she, and she shows her hand because when she talks about edwin she said he she likes him because he's stable aka he got money or aka he's willing to spend his money on her and then he's good on paper. You're 40 something years old, you've had four miscarriages, none of your relationships have worked and you still caught up in this good on paper thing? Like you still don't realize that it's deeper than that and that, you know, and that's why you're here because you want a connection. She's just a walking contradiction. I'm just so over her, but I'm not over her because there's more at the end, I'm gonna get back to her. But let's just move on. You see Winter talking to Jay and she's basically letting him know that she wants him to fight for her. She says, you know, if you see me talking to somebody else and you want to talk to me, you want to spend time, you know, you can come and interrupt. And Jay is like, you know, I'm not a confrontational dude. I'm here to basically say, I'm here to play the game. I'm here to, to do what we're supposed to be doing to like kind of mix and mingle and meet people. Like I'm not going to go around, you know, puffing my chest and trying to pull you away from other dudes because I don't want you doing that to me either. And he's already pretty much said that Naya is his number one. So when, so he's just not feeling you like that. But I do like that he was quasi honest with her. He did not say, oh, okay, I'm gonna fight for you. I'm gonna do this or or, or, or just kind of sell her a, a, a bill of goods when he knows that that's not really how he feels about her. Or that's not really the energy between them. But you know, hey, she, she was honest with him. She told him what she wanted. I think he was honest with her and telling her like, that don't move like that. So I think they kind of know where they stand with each other. She did say something I thought was interesting. She said that um, she doesn't give exclusive benefits to non-inclusive men, something like that. I'm paraphrasing, but that's 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 some true tea right there, and that's that's a that's a lesson for some for women or for anybody really. If somebody's treating you like an option, you can't treat them like they are your your sole source, you know. So she gets it, she understands that, and I think she's. And then you see later on, she starts to explore what's his name, Anthony. Isn't Anthony? No, what that man name is. 
Brian, she starts to explore. She goes on a date with Brian. I guess she's trying to feel it out a little bit, realizing that Jay is really not into her the way she is into him. Adriana and Kalfani, they've had their connection has been growing week to week. At first, I thought it was superficial. Her friend thought it was superficial, but it seems like she's really into him. I wasn't sure if she liked him. She was just caught up in all the muscles or she was trying to stick it to Denise because her and Denise, Denise doesn't really like her and Denise is checking for Kalfani. But it seems like they seem to like each other. So two things that happen, interesting. This, the two of them are sitting outside and they're all cuddled up. Rashid walks by and sees it. Now, Rashid and Adriana started off with a connection in the beginning and they seem to have their eyes set on each other. But Adriana is now, you know, putting a little more emphasis on Kalfani. Rashid takes it like a G. He realizes this is a game. This is a, a you know, we all in here to mix and mingle and to meet people. And if she want to give him attention, hey, whatever. Like he, he's not, he's not up in his feelings as he should, nor should he be, because that's just the nature of what they're doing right now. So he sees it, he acknowledges it, you know, makes a mental note. And we'll see later that he starts to explore his other options. Now, Denise is the polar opposite of Rashid because she walks by and she sees the two of them cuddled up. She walks by, she gives them a little look, you know. She comes back through, she tells them that they're being messy. Being, she, it, it was very college campus, you know. My, walk through the student center two or three times, make sure that they see you seeing them. Uh, you know, just childlike and angry. And, and it was messed up because, honey, last week or the week before when you had your friend on the show to meet the men you liked, you brought Calfani and Anthony to meet your friend at the same time. So you put him in a situation where you pit him against somebody else in real time, letting him know you're also interested in Anthony. You also was out playing whatever that game, bocce ball or whatever with Anthony. Y'all took your clothes off. You jumped in a pool together. So you can do all of that, but he can't sit on the couch with this girl. How you sound? Like, I don't, again, I don't understand people who have one set of rules for themselves and another set of rules for other people. Denise, yo, if you feel a way about it, that's fine. You're gonna feel a way if you like him. All everybody there who has a connection with somebody feels a way when they see him with somebody else. But that's just what you signed up for. And while they're doing that, you're doing that too. So how dare you st you walk and, and 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 traipse back and forth and giving people dirty looks? Like I can't with her. And I know some people say, you know, you she's she's different. She's not that person. She's misunderstood. How many weeks are you going to be misunderstood though? We're on episode seven and you're still acting a fool. This is the, Tonight will be the third time, I think, that you almost get booted. And you keep receiving the message and then acting, acting up the same way the following week. Like, what's really good with you? Anyway. Simone, I am proud of Simone. She gets herself back in the game because... Things were looking bleak for her. You know, week one, she almost went home and then she didn't have a connection with anybody. She didn't even get to introduce her. Well, her friend never came because there was nobody for her friend to introduce anybody to. But she realizes, okay, the numbers are starting to dwindle. I need to step up my game if I want to stay. So she goes, she rolls up on Rashid, has a one-on-one -on -one with him and lets her know, just point blank, hey, I'm interested in you. I want to spend some time. Very grown woman. Very grown woman, very to the point, um, you know, flirty. She went out there looking all cute with her little animal print. She had one breast out and leaned in. It was just a good, she did good. She did real good. And Rashid loved it. He was here for it. Another thing I liked that she did was she put it out there. Listen, I'm interested in you. I, now you can set up a date for us. So it wasn't that it was a, assertive, but it wasn't aggressive. It was a, hey, I'm going to let you know I'm interested and now I'm going to step back and I'm going to let you pursue me. That that was that was a uh, that was a G move right there. 
and Rashid really liked it because I get the sense that Rashid is an alpha male. Um, you know, he likes the pursuit, you know, he's a charmer. I think he wants to do all those things and, and wine and dine a woman. So like the fact that she allowed him to take the next step, um, but opened the door for him. So he knew that there was a step to be made, worked out well for them. And then he sets up a really cute date for them in this like old um, vintage truck or something because he's into vintage cars. And it was like in the back of the pickup and some wine. It was, it was was really really cute very original um, and they vibe they talk they have some good con a deep a deep conversation you know she asked him about some things in his past they talk um, and then they end up kissing like kissing kissing so I hear it you know because Rashid sees that Adriana's got interest in Kalfani why should he just sit on the sidelines and wait for her to turn back to him and Simone ain't got nobody so like it's just it works out perfectly and they actually really look good together so We'll see what happens. I like Rashid. Rashid, in the beginning, I thought he was a little bit of a showman, but I think his answers are so, he has depth. You know, in his conversation with Simone, and then he had a conversation with, I wanna say Alex, and he was talking a little bit about his childhood and his father passing away, you know, issues he had in school. It was very, it seemed genuine, it seemed real. You see, he's a man that has, that has has lived a, tr a real life and has, has has had some struggles and is the man he is today because of it. He learns from his mistakes. He he seems evolved. And you know, he's got a little bit of that frat boy thing going on. Um, you know, but it's 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 a it's a lively, fun kind of energy that he has. I, he just seems like a nice package. So um, I think any of these women, if he is who he says he is, or if he is who he's portraying himself to be, I think any of these women would be lucky to link up with him. But I'm kind of rooting for Simone because, you know, I want her to stay in the game. You know, she started off bumpy, but I, I think she's, you know, there's some room for her. I th I'm seeing some growth with her, and I think Rashid might be the, the right one for her. So Edwin takes Naya out. He, in he invites her out to do some tantric yoga. Another G move, really smooth. You know, it was different, it was original, it was a little sexy, it was flirtatious, but it wasn't disrespectful. And that thing he did where he said, you know, I'm a, you lean your back on me and I'll hold your weight. <sighs> you know, Edwin, that was good. Like, I, I think I might've got, you might've got me with that one too, you know, because that's essentially what women want, right? You know, you want somebody who's going to help carry your load. And not say support you 100%, kind of like what Naya wants, but more just like, you know, help help take the load off every now and then. Or somebody I can just really lean on and just lean back and just put my faith in them that they're going to do the right thing, that they're going to lead me, that they're going to support me. I mean, that's essentially what he was saying with that move. And she physically, it, it, he physic, they physically embodied what he was trying to communicate to her. I thought that was, um, that was a power, I don't want to say powerful, but that was a good moment. I think, you know, he scored a lot of points with Naya. Um, it was cute, it was real cute. So um, so they're making a connection. I still think she's more into Jay. I think, I think Jay is more her style. Um, but Edwin is, he's, 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 in the, he's in the race. So we'll see what happens. The elimination, when they, they all reconvene and they're all back in Tommy's Tavern and they're just talking about, okay, what do you think about the ladies? And, and really just trying to come to a consensus on who should go home. I like that uh, Tommy calls. I like that Tommy called Brian out. When it came up with the topic topic of Alex, you know, those two had a connection and it started to kind of dissipate at some point. And Alex said it's because he doesn't listen. She feels like when she talks to him, it's like you know, it, the words are just kind of going over his head. He's not really there. He's kind of just sitting and thinking of something, some kind of witty quip to say and it's just there's 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 a lack of substance there and so Alex is starting to slowly pull herself away from him and so when they were at the the elimination Tommy asked if anybody had a conversation with Alex and Rashid said that he and Alex spoke they had they had a little conversation they talked about some deep things she revealed to him that her mom has some kind of debil debilitating illness and she's you know pretty much bedridden or something to that effect and how it's affected her and Alex had no idea. 
And since day one, her and Alex have been spending time together and he had no idea about her own mother. And it just goes as more evidence to prove that he doesn't listen. And she had one conversation with Rashid and she felt comfortable enough to share that with him. So it just kind of speaks volumes about her connection with uh, Brian and Brian's head. You know, I was, I had kind of taken Brian's side a couple of episodes ago when when he and uh, Alicia, I think her name is, got into it and she was upset because he left her room and never came back. And then he said that, you know, he's not good at, at letting people down or disappointing people. And, and I was giving him a pass because I thought maybe, you know, he just didn't know how to tell her he wasn't into her. But now I'm seeing a pattern where he doesn't communicate well. He doesn't listen. He's always trying to, you know, come up with some some little catchphrase or some some play on words and you know that's cute every now and then but every week be like you don't have another script it's just immature it's a turn off to anybody who's serious and i guess it's just kind of who he is he lacks he just lacks substance and he lacks so much substance to not even know that he lacks substance i don't even know that he realizes where he went wrong with alex so you can't fix something if you don't acknowledge it. So I'm hoping he's the next one to go because he he's not doing anything. He's not saying anything. He's just kind of taking up space and just he's just wasting air. They ask Kalfani about his connection with Denise. And he lets everybody know that she's just a little too aggressive. She's too jealous, a little too uh, possessive, you know. And we've been seeing this all along where, you know, she, she gets upset when he's talking to anybody else. She wants all of his attention. Um, you, you know, it's just, it's, it feels like it's smothering to him. And when he was having a, a car, he was having a conversation with Adriana, I thought this was interesting, something he said, because I, I hear this a lot and I've seen this a lot where when she asked him why he's still single and he says, you know, he meets people, but he allows himself to be chosen. So a woman will decide she likes him and then he'll just kind of be alone for the ride and then realize later she's not the right one. And I know a lot of men like that, especially good guys, you know, guys who are nice guys, you know, especially if they're attractive or there's something about them that's attractive, that women will, will flock to them. And then you'll get the most assertive or aggressive ones who will choose them and say, hey, you're, we're going to be together. You're going to be my man. Some take it as far as, hey, you know, we're going to get married. And they set up this whole plan and the dude is just kind of like along for the ride, even though he didn't really choose it. And then when he tries to pull out later, they, 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 they pen him as the bad guy, but, you know, they were doing all of the work, you know, they were setting the stage and I get the impression that that's what happens with Kalfani a lot where, and, and it's happening again with Denise, you know, this is kind of just like his pattern. An aggressive woman comes up, she decides she likes him, she puts her claws into him and then she scares every other woman off so that he just kind of ends up being with her. So I thought it was interesting that he observes that and I thought it was interesting that he was able to see that that is something that happens to him. And hopefully being able to identify that pattern is something he can avoid moving forward. And maybe that's why he has hesitation with Denise because he sees that this has happened before and he doesn't want to repeat the pattern. So when it comes time for elimination, now we only have two women who are up for elimination and no surprise, it's Denise again because you know she's just always just doing the most so she meets up with jay they have a nice conversation and jay i have to say he he's really i don't want to say articulate because i feel like it's insulting when you call a, an, an adult articulate as if they're not supposed to be but i think he has a very mature way about him and he is a good choice he, he uses he has a good choice of words he has a way of delivering something that is um he gets his message across but the, the tone is received well because of the way he says it. Um, and that's probably why, you know, he's a fan favorite. He just has a very smooth way he communicates well. And he told her, you know, that you, you basically you're doing too much. And she knew it. And she even said it. She's like, I know I'm being a little aggressive and blah, blah, blah. And of course, she says she's going to change and she realizes that Kalfani has to go out and explore and it's fine if he gets, if he explores and it's all good, you know, and I don't know why in episode seven, you're just realizing this, but it sounds like it's just lip service because it's the thing to say and you don't want to go home. Interestingly enough, she says all of these things. Okay. She receives what Jay says. I realize I might've been doing too much. 
And at the very end, she has to get it in where she says, you know, I, I'm just not going to be disrespected. Who's disrespecting you? Where did you even get that from? It's like that anger in her. It just can't go underneath the water. It's like, you know, you ever have like a beach ball or something and you try to push it under the water in the pool and if you hold it down for a while, like it always comes right back to the surface. That's her anger. She cannot push it down. She cannot let it get below the surface. It's always that little bit that comes back up. That statement was unnecessary. Nobody wants to be dis disrespected. That's a given. Nobody disrespected you. And how do you perceive what his behavior was is just and the fact that you perceive it a disrespect says a lot about you i'm just i know folks y'all keep saying she's misunderstood and she's a nice person and stuff i'm not i don't see it i don't see it at all she really just it's not just her it's women like her i don't understand and i'm just and i don't want to understand i guess that's kind of what it is i'm just she's not gonna change she's 39 years old she is who she is. She's comfortable in her own skin. Um, but she's not going to find love, not on this show. I, I predict that. That, that uh, You could take that check to the bank. The final scene. Naya gets pulled to the, to the, the couch for all the obvious reasons. Rashid is the one to speak to her or Rashid's another one like Jay you know he communicates well he has a way of getting his point across and it being received well um but you know everything is going well while he's complimenting her while things are positive but the moment he tells her and I thought this was a really nice way that he said it as well he said you know you've made a lot of connections you made some impressions, but you haven't made connections or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But that was the nicest way he could say it. And it's before he could even get the last word out of his mouth, this chick gets up, puts her drink down, and storms out the room. Come on, man. How old are we? I, I, hate a, I hate a person who can dish it out but can't take it. You are rude. Not only to Chris, but the other woman in that room last week when it was elimination time. And now when somebody tells you that your time is up and tells you nicely and graciously, you have to act a damn fool. You know, not only does she disrespect Rashid by not letting him finish his thought, but she storms off. She's throwing comments at them as she walks out. You know, oh, y'all messed up. I'm the best one or, or just a whole bunch of just nonsense. She then starts talking about how she never really liked anybody here. She was never about Chris. Um, you know, Chris was smitten with her because she got he got attention from one of the baddest chicks here. She's a prize. She's always... I mean, there was just a litany of self-affirming, delusional statements flowing out of her mouth. And all of that was just overcompensating for the fact that you messed up. And you know it. And instead of owning it and putting on your big girl panties, you make it everybody else's fault. The producer tries to stop you. You tell him he's not going to embarrass you. How are you being embarrassed by getting eliminated when that's part of the damn game? And everybody gets eliminated at some point. How are you being embarrassed? You taking your mic off? You walking off into the darkness? You sound a fool. Then she goes on and says, I, my boyfriend is waiting for me in Atlanta. Huh? Your boyfriend you have you have a boy why why are you here like it, it and i know that that's a lie but you don't even have the wherewithal and the grace and the maturity to just say thank you this was a great experience and leave if you want to go back home and talk to your friends and talk about how they messed up and you the baddest bitch in the world do that but not there and not then it's on camera there's so much proof of your lies and your delusion in week one and two, you was all up under Chris. The statements you made. This is the best date you've had since you're 15. It's amazing. It's captivating. It's all these things. Edwin is this, that, and the other. Now you don't even, you're not even interested in Edwin. Now you're not interested in anybody. What? You look a fool. I truthfully went on one of the most amazing dates that I could say that I've been on since I started dating at 15. And I'm almost 43. You know, he has swag and I like swag. You look like a damn fool. And I cannot wait for the reunion for somebody to call you on it. I don't know who that person is going to be, but somebody need to call her on it. Because she can't go on like that.
she should not be out in general population acting like this. But you know, I'm glad she was on the show because now it's a cautionary tale and any man who comes across her knows her and sees who her for who she is and she needs to go and work on herself. She needs to go sit on somebody's couch and talk about her issues and unpack her luggage because you are not going to get a meaningful relationship acting like that. You're just not. And you don't deserve one until you get yourself together. Out here wasting people's time talking bad about folks and they want people to do your podcast. Bitch. Well, I'm glad Naya's gone. I want Denise to go to be gone next. I want Denise gone. I want Brian gone. The rest of them can stay. So next week, it looks like they're going to eliminate one guy and one girl. So this should be interesting. This is the best ready to love. I know it's only the third season, but this one is so good. It is so juicy. I'm really invested in all these people and the outcomes. And the folks who are left now, I kind of rooting for all of them. I think they're all pretty decent people, except for those two. And I hope that, you know, whoever ends up with whoever, I think that it's, they're going to win because they seem like they're all a good group of people. They all seem, you know, well-rounded and balanced and mature um, and, and truly ready for love. So let's talk about it. I know y'all going to have a lot to say about Denise because I know some of y'all folks love her. But hey, and uh, what do y'all think about Naya? Because I know some folks were on, her pay, were on the same page with her about the not paying half. I'm not sure that I agree with that part, but I can understand how somebody would feel that way. But her behavior, it's not her not wanting to pay pay half. That's not it at all. It's her behavior. It's her poor behavior at this, making me call her to task. So I don't want you to misconstrue the two. The two. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think, and we will talk next week. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe.